A funny thing happened to me a few days ago. I was doing some reading on my laptop and I got a little notification that said, by the way, George, it's your birthday tomorrow. Now it took me by surprise because I'm not really looking at the date here. And for a brief moment, I thought, geez, George, you're going to be 23 tomorrow. You're well into your 20s now. You're growing up rather quick. And I wonder if you guys have similar thoughts of the feeling like you're growing up too quick or if time is moving too quickly. And I've been thinking about this for the last few days. Talked to Master Guru about it and done some meditation on it. I want to share my thoughts with you because it's helped me and I think it could help you as well. Okay, so first of all, let's just completely destroy the idea that growing up means getting boring and decrepit. So let's take Master Guru as an example. You see, I'm at the age, already at the age of uh, 50. Uh, people would just think, oh, this is a half of the life. Well, I always think I am in full youth. Uh, I never have the sense of age. So Master Guru is full of energy and joyful. And this is actually quite common for Taoists. Taoism is the ancient Chinese philosophy that we've been exploring on this channel. And you can actually just think about it as a collection of teachings for living a long and youthful life. The most successful and enlightened Taoists are known as immortals, those people who have mastered the art of longevity. In a certain sense, life is very short, okay, compared with the universe, compared with, well, the time, the end of this time. However, authentic Taoist practitioner, he does not think so. When you really reach this level, you feel you are uh, merged, blended with, with the end of this time, the, the time and the space, the cosmos. You are just one part of it. So there's actually a hermit that lives on this mountain in a cave. And we went and visited him. And I said in broken Chinese, Wasi Huan need a kusa, because he's wearing these very thick trousers. And he giggled, it was hilarious. He had a very infectious laugh. And he's been living in that cave for 20 years and has obviously mastered the joyful art of Taoist living. So I hope it's clear now that growing up doesn't mean growing boring. But what are the secrets of these Taoist masters? Well, let's unpack the teachings. So the first step is to look after your body. Now, some people may compare the body to a car. You eat a meal like you would fill the car with petrol, and then you use the energy throughout the day, and then you are depleted and have to refill it. But actually, the body doesn't work like that. The more you use it, the more energy you get. So as if you're driving a VW Beetle, and the more you drive it, the more it turns into a Tesla Roadster. So we need to look after our body. And yes, you've guessed it, Tai Chi is an awesome way of doing so. That's because you mobilize all your joints in a natural way. Your muscles become flexible and limber. You improve your stability so you're less likely to fall over and strengthen your legs so that you can stand and walk for longer. But you don't have to do Tai Chi, you can do whatever you want. But the point is, is that by looking after your body, it will give you energy for decades to come so that you can wake up like Master Gu does with energy every morning. So the next thing we need to do is to look after our minds. And Taoism teaches us to discard egotistical desires, complexity, and a few other things, and that will return us to our natural state. And in that state, the secret of life is revealed to us that actually it's quite fun. That's because in the natural state, you're not beating yourself up for being someone you're not, and you're not worrying about what other people are going to do or what's going to happen to you because you trust that things will work out. Now, this joyous way of living isn't just restricted for hermits who live on the mountain. Indeed, Lao Tzu, the writer of the Tao Te Ching, intended his teachings to be for none less than the emperors of China themselves. Take the third chapter of the Tao Te Ching, for example. Putting a value on status will create contentiousness. If you overvalue possessions, people begin to steal. The sage governs by emptying minds and hearts, by weakening ambitions and strengthening bones. Practice not doing. When action is pure and selfless, everything settles into its own perfect place. So even for the complex life of the Chinese emperors, the advice is exactly the same. Don't rule the country for your own ambitions, rule it for the good of the people. And since we're the rulers of our own lives, we shouldn't be motivated by ambition or money. We should instead act to serve people and to help people, and doing so will give us joy. So that means we can lead complex lives without becoming boring sods. By living in harmony with the Taoist teachings, we can still have fun, even with a challenging job and kids.
Now, just the mention of kids may scare you, and I certainly don't want to have kids yet. So the last stage is to be like water. Now, we mention water quite a lot on this channel, and that's because it's got many Taoist qualities. It's flexible so that if it's put into a new container or if it's dropped or moved, it adapts and becomes calm again. And also it moves in its own natural way. So it uses gravity to take it where it's needed. So if you like water, you'll trust your future self to be where it needs to be. If you're not ready for kids in 10 years time, then your future self will make the decision that it doesn't want to have kids. You'll move through life at your own pace. You won't have to constantly compare yourself against what your friends are doing or what your parents are telling you you should be doing. Like water, you'll be in the right place at the right time. But that's not to say you should be running away from difficult decisions your whole life. We also should realize relatively our life is short. So every day is very valuable. We should value each day of our life. Focusing on what you don't want to do is a pointless and exhausting waste of energy. Instead, focus on what you do want and gently move towards it. And because you'll be like water, if something turns out different to how you expected it, then you'll calibrate your direction and maybe choose something else if that looks better. But the point is, is that you're always moving towards something that you want and so growing spiritually as a person, not just staying static. After all, water only stays fresh when it's moving. So if we remind ourselves to be like water, that means we don't need to be scared of growing up because we understand what we want now may be different to what we want in the future and we trust our future selves to make the right decision and be flexible when the situation changes. So there you go, there are the Taoist teachings for not being scared of growing up. So first of all, look after your body. And then secondly, serve others and don't be motivated by egotistical desires and all the other Taoist teachings. And third of all, to be like water, to be flexible. If you do these things, you'll wake up for decades full of energy and you'll be joyfully approaching life. And also you'll be flexible so that if life sometimes gets you down, you'll be able to pick yourself back up. Now, I hope you found that interesting. I've completely run out of light here. But yeah, let me know your thoughts. See you soon. So if you enjoyed the video and like to help out the channel, share this video with one friend that you think would enjoy it. I'd really appreciate it. And the obvious question is, have you guys experienced similar feelings? So I just reviewed some of the footage and realized that I'm having a real bad hair day. 